everybody else is trying to dig into your bottom line try and ignore them it is very easy to have um, big magazine companies I was just do, about to say a name then thank God I didn't big cosmetic <laughs> my name is Esnet as you know I own a skincare company it's called Nessai Beauty I usually leave everything in the links below so today I'm coming talking to you about how to start your own skincare company in 2021 I'm going to go through the basics of exactly what you should be thinking about before you start right up until the launch after the launch everything is really left up to you and how fast you grow depends on um, how much money you have and how well your marketing goes so without further ado let's get straight into it the first thing that I want to say is you have to start with your audience in mind so before you even get into the kitchen start formulating or call those companies who are going to do your private labeling for you the first thing that you have to do is think of who you're going to sell this product to where they work where they live how they eat who they play with where they hang about which supermarkets they go to how much they earn how much they're likely to spend what do they like what problem do they have that you are going to solve once you can tell me all that you can go to the drawing board now you have a good idea of how much your product should cost so that it's not money is not an issue for your particular client to go and buy the product so that's number one then you've got that out of the way it's not an issue for your particular client to go and buy the product one then you've got that out of the way you go to the drawing board you've got your problem you're going to you you've got your problem and you've got your solution the first thing that you need to do is where are you going to find this customer on this plat on what platform are you going to find them i'm just going to talk about what i know let's say it's instagram remembering do not take this at face value because instagram only now shows about five percent of the people that follow you um your your content because they want you to pay so that they can show people um your content so this is not a really good strategy anymore unless you have a ready built audience audience that you're going to sell to so just remember that because when you are starting you want to spend the least amount of money possible once you've done that you will need a website as soon as you started uh, building your website uh, make sure that your website is professional make make sure that it includes all the information about the product that you're going to launch uh, make sure you start small um, try and have a capsule collection first I would say even three products are enough when you're starting believe me um, you, you you don't have to go for the basics of a cleanser toner moisturizer you could be different you could start with an exfoliator something whatever your idea is or the problem that you're trying to solve is after you've got the products that you're going to initially uh, launch you create a website once you have that website have a landing page on that landing page is where you're going to start selling before you even have the products if possible have people be able to pre-order your products so that you just start creating momentum about the product um, so you have your website you have created a landing page where you're going to drive people to so that they can input their email addresses so that they can be notified when the launch is upon you so you you have that going that should be going I would say you do it six months in advance um, I did it slightly differently only because I learned as I was going along I know better if I'm doing launches now I do them uh, very differently to what I did when I initially started 
um, so after you've done your website you need to register with company house um, that you were either you're going to open a limited company this is in the UK it's very simple go to company house straightforward you input your details before you know it they will send you a certificate to say your company has been opened and make sure that you stick with the regulations and follow the rules and you keep up with your taxes and everything self-assessment that they need you doing if you are unable to do that just get an accountant pay them I think about 90 pounds a month and they will make sure that all that is up to date on your behalf however when you're starting you really don't want to be paying that those amounts of money here and there because all that counts and that could go towards your project creation or your marketing so what I would advise you to do is educate yourself on how you can do your books and your accounting so that you are not having any problems with HMRC that's if you're in the UK once you've sorted that part out have some sort of a system think in advance what you're going to do if all of a sudden boom you go viral how are you going to scale this usually happens gradually so you see it coming so you won't have to think on your feet when it happens but it's a good thing if you have big dreams a clear vision to start thinking about how you will scale your business uh, from where it's probably going to start to selling maybe 10 orders a day to when you start getting a hundred orders a day and yet you are a one-man show you won't be able to do all these things at the same time think about the end keep the end um, in mind and then you also have to decide are you going to have somebody else make the skincare products for you are you going to be an artisanal skincare formulator where you make your cosmetics at home if so there are lo that's a whole series on its own because there are loads of regulations you need to stay up to date with and you need to uh, follow and uh, laws that you need to comply with so that you are uh, authentic and you are you don't fall, get into trouble along the way as your business grows so I would say the easiest way would be to be a private label where you approach a company they will either have already formulated some cosmetics and you choose what you want this is what a lot of major beauty retailers do anyway these companies that formulate cosmetics already have a huge range for you to choose from. You pick what you want, put a few additives here and there, voila, your product is ready. They can even package it for you, label it for you as long as you pay them. And you can start your selling. And this does not make your business any less viable, believe me. L'Oreal, you name them, they all do something similar. Or start, I mean, you were doing something similar. I don't know what they do these days. Um, so you have that if you're an indie brand that means you will need to go to some sort of school where you will learn formulation because there are lots of numbers and chemistry involved you'll need to understand the ingredients how they interact with each other are you going to be natural organic or clean if so what products are you going to use you need to have the skill the eye the patience the tenacity and attention to detail to formulate cosmetics that will go into shop shelves and you will go into somebody's home and they will have to apply them on their skin because people have been known to use cosmetic products that have ended up harming them or making them blind if you're not careful so make you you uh, consider this very carefully before you decide which road you're going to take you will also need to be certified and comply with other regulatory bodies before you start selling your products to the public. And all these things along the line will cost you money. So you have to decide what you can afford and what you can't. Set your budget on how much you want to spend on your uh, product creation. Think about your packaging. Most people are going for sustainable at the moment. So I would say, that's a safe route to go but start wherever you can don't let that stop you once you've thought about what type of packaging you're going to go for labeling how you're going to do that um, to start small like what we say so don't go for these companies who say you have to order 5,000 of each 
MOQ minimum order value um, ignore them because you do not want to have 5,000 face frames sitting in the garage and not selling so start small and grow gradually this way you are definitely guaranteed um, some sort of success or even if it doesn't work out and you change your mind you can always just give it to friends and family and you don't have to throw away a lot of money um, so once you have your packaging sorted you also have to think about postage shipping how are you going to do that uh, the packaging that you're going to pack the products into um, what's going to protect them as they get shipped all these are things that you have to consider once you've considered them once you've got the price for everything you now have to sit down and work out how much everything costs is going to cost you so I'm talking about from when you started building your website uh, getting an accountant the paper the printing everything that you're going to do incorporate all the expenses that you're going to have calculate it and come up with a figure once you come up with a figure include it into the price of your project um that's when you will kind of it's a whole different it's a topic on its own to show you how you calculate the price of your project so you will have to incorporate and think about all the things i haven't even talked about uh, things like lighting the paper uh, your electricity that you're going to use internet you name it a uh, vat but in the uk you only start paying VAT after you have paid your you have reached you're starting to get eighty five thousand and above um, uh, a year so you don't necessarily have to worry about that initially so once you have all that under your belt you've got your product you've thought about how you're going to get it to your customer how you are going to get in front of the customer to start with so that they can purchase your product um you and how you are once you've got one customer uh, you have to retain them the quality of your products have to be at the forefront of your mind as well how you're going to make sure that you retain that quality or even make it better as time goes on you now start thinking about um, your launch days when you're going to launch how you're going to launch press I would say when you're starting really do not worry about press you will have loads of people what in your pocket would be telling you will get you in front of this will get you in front of that ignore them completely because your bottom line when you're starting is just getting those customers through your door to give you money and believe it or not it won't be money to go into your pocket business money to keep that business churning so you need to concentrate on how you're going to get your customer through the door how you're going to retain them or actually convert them get them get the lead convert them to buy your product now you have money to do other things but your bottom line is getting that person to pay you and become your customer everybody else is trying to dig into your bottom line try and ignore them it is very easy to have um big magazine companies or sense to come to you and say oh uh, pay us a thousand pounds so that we can feature you in a magazine it sounds so enticing but majority of the times in my experience it does not pay off do not do it get your customers to love you get your customers to spread the word about your product and then once you have grown you're at a comfortable place you can then start to advertise um, with magazines you can start to, to pay for other forms of advertising other than what is really sending leads your way for you to convert them to become customers I hope that makes sense um, so yeah I'm getting to about 15 minutes now I don't want to make this too long this is kind of just like um a brief section about how to start your business so that's one thing that you need to think about or to be aware of do not worry you will have people will come to you and say we can optimize your website we can do this we can do that those are long-term strategies that you will do later down the line and you let the business pay for itself 
you might not even need them if your product speaks for itself your customer will tell a friend will tell their mother will tell so and so that you won't even need to spend that much money word of mouth is what grows you and word of mouth seems to be what people trust a lot these days i will talk about using influencers in another video uh for now when you're at this stage don't think too much about influences. Again, that's a minefield in my opinion. You, It can work really well and sometimes it doesn't work so well. So be very careful how you navigate that. So for now, I hope this will do. Let's call this chapter one on uh, how to start your business. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. We're not only going to be doing about this, but this is kind of an introduction of myself to you guys so that you know my background, you know what I'm doing before we get into anything else lifestyle related. But I will always be pushing for you guys to start something that is going to elevate you and uh, get you to achieve your goals in this life so yes don't forget to subscribe if you like this and like share i will see you again soon if you found this useful comment below if you have any questions leave them below i'll try and answer them in the next video thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now